Hi, welcome to DrSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about sebaceous cysts. People that have sebaceous cysts are often worried that they have some kind of a skin cancer, but there's several ways you can differentiate um, sebaceous cysts from, from skin cancers. Sebaceous cysts are considered to be benign lumps. In other words, there's no propensity towards um, skin cancer. So first thing you can look for is um, the sebaceous cysts rate of growth is velocity is very very slow so it usually takes several years uh, to get big like this guy's here second thing is when you look at a sebaceous cyst it tends to be perfectly round it's well circumscribed there's no sense of irregularity to its edges at all third thing is if you look in the center of the cyst you will usually see a little a little hole or dimple I'll do it down here and um, in a moment I'll explain why that is. Uh, tumors don't have that. The other thing is if you actually palpate the cysts or, or touch it and press on it, it tends to feel kind of soft or firm rather than hard or craggy. Um, another thing you can look for is from that little um, dimple or, or punctum, that's actually communicates with the inside of the cysts. And sometimes um, if you press on the on the sebaceous cysts, some some kind of uh, cheesy material will come out of it that smells kind of foul, it smells like rancid oil. Now the reason for that is the sebaceous cyst in the first place is basically a good oil gland which has gone bad. <clears throat> so that's the reason it calls sebaceous in the first place. Sebaceous just means kind of oily. So if you imagine this one here is a sebaceous cyst and from that little punctum we have a, a oil duct. The problem with sebaceous cysts is that the exit point for the oil, where it normally should be squirting out onto the skin surface, gets blocked for reasons unknown. So instead of the oil coming out onto the, the surface, the oil stays inside under the skin, eventually forming a, a big cyst or a big vat full of oil. And that's what tents and pushes the skin up. Uh, the bad news about sebaceous cysts is I'm not aware of any way to get rid of one from home. Uh, typically when I encounter them in clinic I have to remove them surgically. <clears throat> and removing them is uh, pretty simple. Um, you basically just freeze the, freeze the skin in the area using a syringe. So you numb the skin, then I use a scalpel, slit it open, then um, use some, some various devices to, to get around the sack, hopefully grab it in its entirety and pop it out. And it literally pops out most of the time like a, like a, like a big pea out of, out of, from under the skin. And it's not very deep under the skin either, it's, it's above the muscle layer. <coughs> uh, and you also try to make sure you get rid of this root here. If you miss the root, after you close back up the skin, the uh, sebaceous cysts in 6 to 12 months will um, grow back, which is a real nuisance. Then you have to go back in and try it again. So once you've got the cyst out and its um, point of origin, then you just close up the, the skin using stitches. And uh, a week later you take the stitches out. So the most common places that I tend to see the sebaceous cysts are um, on people's backs. And for some bizarre reason, also on people's um, scalps. And most people don't get sebaceous cysts. Some people will get one sebaceous cyst, but I find that most people that have one sebaceous cyst will also have others. So if you have a propensity towards the cysts, uh, you tend to get more than one. But some of them may be so small that they're negligible. I also have seen them on the neck as well, in the neck area. In fact, uh, this past week I removed a huge one. It was about the size of a golf ball. <clears throat> and that had been there for probably about five or six years uh, growing. Um, one other potential uh, problem with sebaceous cysts is that sometimes because there's all that oil stored up inside there, uh, that's a good medium for bacteria to live off of. So if a bacteria can get in through, um, through that punctum and get down inside the, um, into the cysts, it can set up a, a, a pretty bad um, abscess or inflammatory response. In cases like that, uh, you may actually see pus being expressed out of the cysts. Uh, cases like that, it's more than just trying to remove it at that point. What you have to do is actually do what we call incision and drainage, where you actually cut open the skin, 
um, to allow the the pus and material to express. But that I would that would say that that's uh, pretty pretty rare. Most cases are they're just solitary and quiet and just a nuisance because they're disfiguring. They're ugly. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a uh, sebaceous cyst in a nutshell. Uh, basically, they're nothing to worry about. Um, but you typically would have to go and see your family doctor to get them uh, removed. Um, and that's basically it. So thanks for watching and uh, stay well. And hope you never get one of these. But if you do, there's something we could do for it and get rid of it for you.